All right, everyone, this is Volshock. We're going to be doing a replay review for our boy Nutty Wombat, feller mentor, the Canadian varmint, as he's called in the bar community. And we are uh, on Eye of Horrors, which is an awesome 3v3 map. So some critical parts about this, it's actually relatively metal rich. It doesn't look like it, but all of these are three. Well, they're 2.9 mexes, which is awesome. Um, so you actually end up with quite a bit of metal as you kind of go through and uh there's four geos on it and all the geos need to be accessed by bots which means that a lot of times like you'll have some combination of bot or vehicles because you generally need one person who's going to be able to go up and lanes are really simple it's just kind of a straight shot like this with the exception of middle um you can really open either way but the probably the most important thing is that this is one of the few maps where i think bot vehicle differences are done very well so if you look at your commander who's a bot, he can actually cross these slopes and all your other bots can as well, which means that when you're fighting vehicles, you can abuse these and you can abuse sort of the edge of the terrain to do things like dodge whistler shots or just go past and raid. Like if their army is in here and you run past, you can go kill their base. So that's like one of the critical things there. It also means that if you are vehicles, you need to be super reactive and have really good radar coverage because in general, radars aren't going to be able to cover a lot of things, right? Like if they're built on the low ground. So in order to get away from that, you need to build them in mid, like somewhere like that, or you need to build them. There's some spots up here you can build them, right? Kind of like this, or it's like, see, like even on top of this hill here, it's hard to get like perfect coverage, but you really want to try to, there's a good spot. You really want to try to have like high ground radar because when you're dropping low ground radar, you can kind of run into issues where you can't see critical parts of the map and that really limits you, right? Like if you have radar here, you won't see the raid until it's already crested the slope. So with that said, the last thing to really talk about is the wind and the wind is amazing on this map. It's a max of 25, min of one. So 95% of the time, you're going to just do a full wind-based economy, but it also means that because you're a full wind-based economy, you generally want to have storage probably a little bit earlier than you would on some maps. I generally say you want to go around five minutes or a little bit earlier. Um, it also means that the geos are great to have because when the wind drops, if you've taken the geo, even though, you know, if wind's at 25, it's less efficient than a or Wind at 25 is more efficient than a T1 geo. It still gives you that like uninterruptible power source, which can be really nice because if you have the geo and they don't, you can push into things like LLTs when the wind is low and then they won't be able to shoot, but you'll be able to shoot back. So let's get started. We've got, what is this core? We're gonna go two max into two wind. I like this. I think that third max is too far. And if you're opening bots, you don't really need the metal. Uh, you can just open two max, three wind, or four wind if it drops into straight into bot lab. The only thing I'd say for like, not for Wombat, but for other people watching this is make sure that you know what your allies are building. So you're going to have one bot lab here and Nutty's going to go bots. So if this guy goes bots, it might be a little concerning because you don't want to have like a triple bot start. You can get away with it. It's really a personal preference thing, but sometimes it's nice to have vehicles in case you want like Artie or something else and then you don't have to text switch yourself. So he's also going to go bots. Not the end of the world. It could just be a playstyle preference for all three of these guys. All right, and we're going to go a combination of grunts and cons. This is like the smallest nitpick imaginable, but I'm going to say it anyway because Nutty's a mentor and I love him. So core labs have like the ultimate spin up imaginable. So you always shift queue like Nutty did to build more energy because it literally takes like half a second or what feels like 10 years before this actually starts building units, even if you queue it right away. But if you build the energy like right next to it here, you save like a quarter of a second of rotation time each way. And that half second is absolutely critical, Nutty. So shame on you for wasting that half second. Uh, no, but in all seriousness, it actually works better if you do it right next to it because then you can just like go back and forth when you're building stuff. I don't think you need this second one right away. I think you probably could have just been boosting, but that's totally fine. All right, we're going to get out. We're going to get out our first con. First con's going to take two mexes and then spam wind. I think that's completely fine. 
And then we're going to get a grunt. We're going to go, all right, so one grunt for scouting into a second con. I'm on board with this. Grunt's going to go see what your opponent's doing. Perfect. Boosting out another con, you're going to drop an early nano. So you're not going to drop an early nano. You are going to walk this con forward as well. All right, so you went con, grunt, con, and then it looks like you're spamming out grunts, which I think is fine. You definitely want the grunts for early map control. You see enemy units coming here. Oh, this con's walking back. I know factory guard is a little bit of a contentious thing, but I think that in these situations, it's nice because like this guy probably could have built that nano right away if you had factory guard on. But if you aren't used to playing with it, don't, you know, you don't need to enable it. I just like it for those kind of situations. You're going to drop the nano here. I think this makes sense, right? Because you're going to want your comm on the front for frontline play, but you need the BP for bots to be able to just spam them out. Because one of the big bot issues is like you just don't have the BP to, to burn through all of your metal and all of your energy producing units. So I think the early nano potentially makes sense here. I think you could also maybe just have dropped like another con or two. But with the wind being as high as it, as high as it is, you probably don't need the bot energy generation so i th i think i'm okay with it all right so you kind of get rated a little bit by blue he gets rated and you're gonna go over here and we've got this guy scouting all right so you crest the hill there and your con is chilling uh something that i've started to do that i really like is if I don't know what my con's going to do after, I'll just do a shift patrol, right? Which is H. Yeah, it's just H. Sorry. I'm not sure if mine is default or not, but um, after you build your stuff, just do a like a shift patrol and click. And then even if you don't know what he should be doing, then at least he's like boosting anything else around you. That's something I picked up from I think it was like blow deer or something. I was like, oh, that really makes sense. Like even if you don't know what he what he should be doing, you can just drop a patrol at the end of it so that at least he's doing something nearby but you want him boosting that turret all right and what do we got here all right sweet so this grunt snuck in um okay so perfy's lane is here right and no one's commander has moved out right and your calm his radar generally isn't like especially for like where you came in here right that's the equivalent of like something here. And if you look at your own radar, you don't have the range for that. So even though it's really minor, the fact that Perfy immediately rotated over means he probably has an actual radar like somewhere in his base right here. So what that should tell you, right? Because like if you look at his comm, oh, we can't see his comm radar, can we? I guess not. Do I need to look at his? Don't know why it won't show sorry anyway back to the original comment um what that should just kind of like trigger for you is like hey if i'm gonna raid like this i need to probably raid like that or raid like that or go somewhere else i probably won't be able to sneak units in because they'll see it and they should be able to react alternatively like if his whole army is fighting here you can still run through here or like you know run like that or something uh, but just the fact that he responded so instantly outside of his lane should tell you that there's radar somewhere there. So just take that into consideration for future troop movements. Okay, you're boosting this. I like this. Wind is absolutely amazing. Thank God your allies are overflowing into you, though. All right, more cons. All right, this is like giga greed. Also... The fact that you didn't see this guy until here means you desperately needed a radar. Now, I'm assuming you get away with this because I don't think the game ends at like two and a half minutes. But did you open? You opened like four con, six grunt. That is beyond greedy. But if it works out, it works out. I think you maybe want to have a few more grunts and just try to keep them alive while you're harassing and stuff. All right, so spamming wind with him. You're going to have this guy spam wind as well. You've got two grunts and you've got the nano. I would, your calm is walking forward. I would also, because you have the nano now anyway, I would probably have this guy be your forward con and just have him like take that and then go there and then your commander can like do this or something, right? I mean, your commander is going to need to be in mid anyway, but I think if you do something like this, Although red might take that, I don't know. But if you do something like that, then you have the front con, which you need, and your commander can get the other side, because you're going to want to get all those mexes as soon as possible. 
All right, and then we are spamming grunt, so grunt resbot con on repeat. I like that. Um, I think that, well, I think you're fine to spam grunts for now. I think there's definitely a conversation to be had later about when you want to transition from pure grunt to like rocket bot or thug. Uh, but let's spam some more units and see what Perfy does first. All right, you kind of have a stopgap LLT. I'm okay with that. Keep going. So I normally, like we normally always say like you always want to take all available mexes before you drop any converters or anything else. But there's been a few times here where it seems like you're almost burning no E, which I'm sure your allies are excited for. And like when the wind's high, that's fine. You might still want to consider dropping like a converter because it costs you nothing, right? If you're M stalling, like you're about to M stall, if you're M stalling, but you have excess E, it makes, there's no reason not to, right? It's not like your BP is getting used anyway. So I'd say just be aware of that. It looked like it was happening before, but now you're spending more. Oh, because you're building a con. Okay. All right. And you got radar coverage here out of curiosity. So this guy's here and it sees that if you did, you would have had to move a little bit more. I think something like that's probably better because your comms walking this way anyway. So like if you tap that, drop the LLT and then drop radar there, right? I mean, it's relatively similar, but you do get like a little bit more vision for the high ground one. I don't know. I guess it's relatively similar, but still try to abuse those when you can, because they also give um, when they're up high, they give the increased LOS and radars have 680. So I think that's pretty awesome. All right, we got our grunts. Let's go find the enemy. So red is a little bit slower to his lane, but you guys have gotten some good. Oh, I missed that little run by. Good work. Oh, so where is Perfy's commander? Okay, it's just coming up now. So you got her here first. That's awesome. I think when you're this far ahead, especially because you pulled a lot of his grunts back, you could definitely try to, I would like, I would say either maybe, I would maybe not skip this max, but I think you could drop the, you could drop the um, extractor here. And then I honestly would probably like, instead of porking here, I would drop your first one like here where it's still defending this max, but it's denying this max, right? Because a lot of times, like, even though it's unintentional, where you drop your first LLT is kind of like where your front just establishes because they don't want to push into it and you don't want to push out of it because, you know, you both don't want to take the risk. So I think that a lot of times, like, if you do, you know, instead of dropping the LLT here, if you just dropped it a little bit more forward, you can guarantee denying him that max. And then that also helps because you can just LLT creep towards him. And if you're here, right, it's a little bit harder to creep and then go like that. But like, if you start here, then you can just like creep, 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 creep. And then you can deny both those maxes and take control of all of those. The one downside is that if you don't have a lot of LLTs here and red dies, then this is green, then green can swerve over and kill you. But I think that, if you'd built this LLT a little bit forward, it'd probably be better. Wait, what is... What? Okay. I always harp on people when they do this, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you no mercy. What is this? Huh? What is this? What is this? It's like four minutes. It's an uncapped max. What is this? What is this? All right. This one maybe, and you know, these ones maybe because there's a com there and stuff, but... You had the BP, right? Like you've got a nano and you've got three cons. You might as well just pull this guy and take that, right? Like you want to take all of these. That's super important. You're, you're basically M stalling now anyway. So having this additional BP on your lab for me doesn't really make sense because you can't utilize it. And this goes back to the converter comment, right? Like when wind is at max, you're at 500 E and when you're building, you're even building a con, which is more E intensive than grunts, right? Like you're barely burning through all of it. Like for this, right, you could drop like two, like maybe three. Well, I'd probably drop two because one's at max, but you could drop like two converters and it give you like a 10% bump in your metal income, which is substantial, right? But again, still, that's only because you're M stalling. You still want to try to take these mexes. And I think if you'd sent the con earlier to take these mexes, it'd be better. Like if you had done duh, duh, and then your commander goes something like that. But, uh, you know, I mean, that's a that's a preference thing. Regardless, 
you know, you could have also had your calm do that and then the the uh, yeah, constructor do that instead. Regardless, you always want a con on front, right? Because like you want the ability to build nanos, especially on a map like this. You want jammers. You want all of those things, right? And another great thing is like if you have the con on front and you drop like one or two nanos, a lot of times it's great because then you just drop your lab up front and you're like, all right, let me do a vehicle switch or let me do, you know, whatever. And then you're that much closer. There is some risk in it, but it's nice because like what if you want to drop dragons, Moz? What if you want to drop an HLT, right? You need a con for that. And so you want to get these mexes anyway. So have that forward con. That forward con is super, super valuable. And he's just pure grunt. Okay, so this is some grunt versus grunt action. So let's circle back to what I had talked about a little bit before of when you want to transition out of pure grunt into like grunt, rocket, thug, whatever combination of those. I think that this is a small enough map that you can really make thugs work, especially in middle, right? Because you can do the thing where like they climb up here and then they step over and they shoot and then they step back down. And like half the time, the rockets, if they shoot back, they hit the hill and they like shoot past the thugs or whatever. So I think you can definitely make that work and you get the bonus high ground from here. And then it's also nice because like if you come up here, you can shoot farther at all of these. Um, and you can go thug a little bit earlier, right? Because thugs fight into grunts relatively well. Alternatively, you know, you need res bots with them, but um, alternatively, you can start spamming rocket bots relatively soon. The fact that his calm is here means there's going to be LLT soon. Like, all right, not as many as I thought, but he should start spamming LLTs, right? So grunts generally, it's kind of hard to pop LLTs and a commander. So I think you want to try to make that switch relatively soon we haven't seen how many grunts he has in total but i think that you want to start making that decision to do that transition also you desperately need e-storage for when the wind drops and if you want to do any sort of comp play all right we find the mechs and the con 24 i think this is worth it if you can kill the con no oh oh i would have dove for the con oh perfect okay we're going back okay I like and dislike this. So I think it's awesome that you killed the con. That's like perfect 100%. I don't think you want to actually dive with these because like, you know how many grunts you have. He should have a ton of grunts. And so you trying to run like this is concerning because you didn't know where the rest of his grunts are. And remember earlier when you had that one grunt run like this, it means that he has radar here, but more importantly, his commander is on the front. His commander's radar will see you. So you can't really do that run by anyway, because he's going to be able to react or Teal's going to be able to react. I think that's a little bit harder to do. I probably would have kept him in mid because you need someone protecting the con that doesn't exist that I keep harping on. Um, that's going to take these these mexes. But I probably would I would have kept these these back. Right, and no one's t2 yet right no all right next thing this is a little bit harder because like you're m stalling right now but i would try to take the geo relatively early because when the wind drops you'll need it and you know you can always just use it to like fund converters if nothing else and you don't have to rush it right like you can send a con to build it and it takes like two minutes or something but he's not going to spend very many resources on it so i think it's totally fine to just like pull one of these cons off and have him go over there and start building because you want that well all right let me take that back first you need to make sure we get these mexes. And once you have those mexes, I would say take this geo. But I think letting the geo sit isn't that valuable because you still want that energy, right? Like that's still very consistent energy and you can use it to tech or more importantly, like it's a great way to do a transition into wind or sorry, into air because the wind, like air wind can be a little bit fickle where when it drops, suddenly you're screwed because you can't handle the E cost. So the geo sort of helps with that. So you need to get these maxes and you need to get that sooner would be my opinion. All right. And because you donated those grunts, now there's kind of a scary grunt indifference in mid. Wait, why are we grouping these so close together? Where is your LLT creep, my dude? So I think I, I like these LLTs. I think that it's great to use them. But I think that you you don't want them in a line like this 
I think you want them like this, right? Like if you have like, if you have LLT, 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 or something like that, right? Like, or even like, you know, maybe like one there, like if you kind of start doing this, especially versus grunts, right? Like the grunts can't run into all these LLTs in the commander. So until rocket bots appear, you can just bully these things, just like walking your commander forward and spamming LLTs. And I think you want to do that until you run into his comm spamming LLTs and doing the same. But your whole goal should be either to take this mechs or just to deny it. Because that's a massive swing in lane, right? Like if you think about it, it's 22E a second. Uh, hold on one second. Sorry, you're at 22 metal a second. So if you take this, you'll go up to 25. And if you, right, and he'll lose, he'll lose that. But like, it's a six metal swing if you're able to take and hold it. But just denying it is honestly good enough. So I would say instead of building these LLTs like that way, build them this way and just slowly creep forward until you run into his stuff. All right, and you've got your grunts on this side. And he's pushing forward a little bit. You're spamming more grunts. I think here you probably could have done a thug transition, to be honest, because you would have been able to fight him, right? Like if you have like high ground thugs here, you can literally just like run up here and just shoot all these things and then run back. And I think you'd be fine. Is he going to commit in here? This looks relatively equal, right? If you could get a better spread probably trade it better with a nice concave here we go check wait no no um the other thing too just to harp on it again because i love you and why not <sighs> if you had a con here the con could just like drop exploiters and then llt creep this way and then these grunts do nothing right because grunts it's it's really hard for grunts to fight into like exploiter llt if you have other grunts with it so again you just want want slash need that con up there all right Perfect has an LLT here. So you could have had the LLT here denying it, but instead he has an LLT that kind of protects it. And because you don't have rocket bots yet, which I think you probably should have done the transition sooner, you can't do that. So because you didn't decide to go thug, I think like you have so many grunts. If you can just LLT forest, I think you should switch to rocket bots. Like you should have probably already switched to Rocco's. I think that grunts, once the lanes are this set up, aren't as useful because you can't push it to anything like yeah they can trade relatively well versus other grunts but why not just build llts that do the same thing and instead have a bunch of rocket bots that can actually push the pork right like all you need are like three or four rocket bots here and you'll chip you'll kill that so orange gets a nice little run by do we have t2 from anyone yet no t2 no t2 no geo no e store okay okay seems good all right, nice. So he pulled his army there. You're going to run up and do some damage here. I'd be really careful because if you get degunned here, it's ugly. Oh, and he has rocket bots now. So now he can start pushing that. Do you? All right, you made the transition. Perfect. Yeah, I don't. I think you're a little cavalier with some of your grunts. I think that like raiding sometimes is can be good. But on a map this tight with the radar coverage, it's going to be so hard for you to run here and not get intercepted by everything that I think maybe it's better to just leave your grunts for use later and then just do the transition into like aggravators or something else. But you've got aggravators coming now, so nice. All right, your column is doing stuff. He's coming over to the other side. You've got a mid radar here that I like. That's awesome. Claret would be very proud. You've got the triple radar. Now you're putting LLTs on this side. Awesome. And you've got a res bot healing that, but you can send your own rocket bots. Just fight command with it. It's good. All right, so you're still pushing here. I think I'm on board with this. Let's look back at your base. All right, so your ally took the geo after a long time. Probably could have done it sooner. Um, I think you still probably could have a converter or two. And I think if you had that, you'd definitely be using it. You still don't have E-Store, man. I think E-Store is going to be critical here. You are spamming wind, which is great. I think you're, you know, you're approaching like 30 plus 
metal a second and you're going to struggle to start spending it all soon. So I would start thinking about what you want your second lab to be. I think you could probably do like, you know, you have rocket bots to kill pork and this guy's bots, this guy's bots, he's vehicles, right? Yeah, he's vehicles. I haven't looked. He might have whistlers. So he doesn't really have whistlers yet. I think this might be a case where you could actually do like a pretty good air transition, but it's just something to think about. Like when you're in these situations of like, all right, I'm starting to get a lot of metal. You know, what do I want to do? Cause I think you, you generally want to mix your labs up, right? It's like, maybe you want to go, you know, bot vehicles so that you can just push through with stouts or with brutes, you know, once his comms dead or something, or, you know, you can have some pounders because he's got a bunch of bots or you can have, you know, you can do a bombing run or you can do sureys to lock everything down. But I think you definitely want to start thinking about that now. Whoa. Doesn't this guy have a radar right there? All right. Well, Clyret is very proud of you and your quad radar strats, but um, it's actually not that bad because you do want the vision for like the radars here for your rocket bots. He's going to push in. Ooh, back up to your LLTs, man. Little APM stall, but not a big deal. You've got your LLTs that are holding there. So I think this is all relatively good. All right, resbots are coming. Ooh, be careful, because if they get D gun, that's a massive loss. Uh, not a fan. All right, but you ate most of it and you backed off. Nice. All right, and you've got rocketbots here. Um, a small thing like this, like normally when you rocketbot creep, right, you can have your commander on the front dropping uh, radars for LOS because rocketbots are awful at shooting at you know radar dots like. I'll probably be wrong here, but like the radar dot says it's there, but it's actually there. So if you're arced like this, it'll be like miss, 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 hit, you know, hit, miss, well, miss, you know, like you, you really need LOS for it. Uh, I think one of the best things you can do is actually, if you don't have the, the radar bot there, just grab one of your grunts and just have it come over and guard one of these, or you can even put it on the same group if you're fight commanding. But um, these have like 350 LOS. 345 LOS grunts are 500. So, um, that extra little like 150, uh, vision is actually really nice a lot of times. And it'll give you just a little bit more so that you can actually hit the targets. Just a small thing to kind of remember. All right. And then again, you're doing an LLT creep this way. Let's do an LLT creep like this. Oh my God, these grunts are going to get absolutely rocked if they try to commit in. So this is awesome, right? I think you probably with your, especially with your LLTs, you could have done this transition sooner and you, it just, it'd be just as effective as it is here because your rockets can hide in your LLT forest and then they can just start chipping away at all the grunts and everything. And that goes back to the original point where right? like your LLT force is like this, but imagine if it was like this. That gives your rocket bots like so much kiting room. And even if the grunts collapse in, your rockos kill, and then maybe you lose an LLT or something else. But like LLTs are the reason you build LLTs is because they're area control structures, right? It's like they're not going to stop a massive stout push or something. But what they do is they enable other units to fight within them. So if you have your LLT forest extending out, then Instead of just having this as your fighting area, you have like this as your fighting area. So it just allow, enables your other units to kind of leverage their strengths better. Okay, and we're starting to get a lot of metal and an absolute insane amount of energy. So, again, right? Like you're, you're accessing 600E. That's a lot of additional metal you could be getting. There's no reason not to do it, right? Like your team isn't wasting energy, but who cares about these scrubs, right? Who cares? Just convert it all yourself. You don't know these guys. No, I'm kidding. Uh, there are games where you do want to overflow, but I would say this is a game where you could be converting this just to like push through mid sooner because you guys are winning this anyway. This is a little concerning on this side, but um, you can probably handle it if you do a Shuri transition or even like a Brute transition where you just run in and then do that. But for now, you're bullying. Per oh, my God, that's beautiful. Okay. 
Yeah, so you're absolutely shredding his army now. I think you need to be careful about getting collapsed on. And all right, still no Easter, which you talked about. I would probably drop your second lab now, right? Like you're starting to float more and more metal. Oh, he took out a lot of his army with that. He's T2 now. Um, so in what's kind of lucky, you're putting enough pressure onto Perfy that Snake has to flex over so he can't push red. But I think if you've pushed him off, like, think when you're pushing, like, what's your goal here? I think it's going to be hard for you, especially with unassisted rocket bots, to do any real damage. Because if you get to, like, here, if your rocket bots don't have thugs or grunts or something else with them, anything that runs at them will kill them. Like grunts spread really well will kill them. Stouts spread really well will kill them. And like if you're here, you can get collapsed upon like this. What's valuable here, right? This mechs is valuable. This mechs is valuable. This mechs is valuable. And you can say this choke point is valuable, but not quite as valuable because he's bots. And so you can kind of raid like this. So you've already denied this and you can kind of start pushing to try to deny this. I don't think you're ever going to be able to get here with your rocket bots to actually deny this. So I think you've already kind of achieved your objective with your rocket bots on this side here. So I think it actually makes sense instead of trying to push any more that way to actually flex over sooner and start trying to fight snake. And then on this side, you can push as well. I'd also make the case that just drop off like a few of your rocket bots on another hotkey and send them over here to start chipping at this because you only need a few rocket bots shooting at LLTs to make everything work. Also, your alley is T2. You want to pay ASAP to get that upgraded um, and you need to be ready to react because he just lost his calm and most of his army. And unless Snake throws really hard here, Red is going to be in a world of trouble. All right, so we're going to do a raid here. I kind of like this. So you see blue coming here flexing, and so you're going to flex through the open gap. You know that they know that you're coming, but you can still probably get in and do damage. So you've seen the LLT there before. All right, let's talk decision making here. So you see these. There's an LLT. There's more grunts coming. I think you, the best case is to just dive for the wind. I don't think you'll make it to the BP. Right. I think if you can, you want to try to run like this so that the LLT can't hit you, because if you can trigger like three of these, then you can chain all of them or not all of them, but you can like do quite a bit of damage. I wouldn't run this way because there's another LLT there. I think you want to try to hide in the, the shadow so those will get cleaned up. I still like it as a raid because you pull a lot of the grunts back so your rocket bots can pressure a bit more. But again, you've already kind of taken what's valuable here, right? You've denied it. I think you want to be fighting over here because there's nothing stopping him now. He can just run up. So you need to be prepared to flex over. Um, I think it's maybe like more of a 1v1 mindset, but I mean, you have so much metal per second. I think once you're above like 35 or 40, you really want that other lab. And I haven't been watching his composition enough, to be honest, because I've been focused on you. I don't think he has that many whistlers, right? All right? So he does have whistlers. So you couldn't shuri this quite as easily. But I think it's one of those things where like Perfy only has his calm and their stuff here. If you just drop an air lab and either bomb like it's a great bombing or it should be a great bombing run bombing map because it's a wind map. These guys have spread relatively well. But like if you bomb Perfy. You can kill a lot and then you can also bomb the geo relatively easily because a lot of times they don't build aa here and it takes a long time for aa to get there but like you could like look at how bomb this is op layout to the max right you can literally drop a bomb there it'll explode all of that i think you have to do two windmills but like if you did a bomb there you could probably get the bp and like all of this all of this e right alternatively because these bots just break out shuri's stun all of these kill him and then kill his commander Um, we need to be helping our homie. All right, and we are now. Nice, beautiful spy bot. He's going to drop another spy bot. He's upping his own mexes. This man is a god, apparently. I think... All right, so you're you're trying to... Again, you're trying to fight here. You already denied this mex. Go here. Well, go here and cut off his reinforcements. Because he can probably deal with the units here. The bigger issue is going to be... 
if he if he trades evenly here but more units keep coming up then he probably dies so i think it's better in this of like i don't think you can push this easily i think just flexing over and then stopping any more pushes here there's a dragon's claw but you could still flex so that his units can't do as much all right and you're gonna bring some grunts and some other stuff over i like that you got a T2 con, which I didn't see, but awesome. And you've got a bunch of people boosting it. Perfect. I think that's great play. I think you want to get those T2 mexes as soon as possible. You're going to drop another lab. I would prefer if this wasn't a bot lab, but I think the concept is there, right? It's like you have more resources. You can't spend it fast enough. So do that. I think um, air lab or vehicle lab is better. I already talked about converters, so I'm not going to harp on it. But before red loses all of his converters, that man got 16 metal a second from those converters. You would have been rich. Absolutely rich. Okay. I don't know how much more. Well, I guess we'll see. So I think definitely second lab, pretty critical there. You're running through. All right, you're upping these. I like this. I think maybe you actually want to go T2 here because you're going to have the metal for it. I mean, you can stay T1, but I, I think if you're going to do another lab, you want a different lab from the one you have, or you just want to go straight T2. Because I think like, you know, Spybot, like Spybot Fiend Sheldon on these hills, that's just a nightmare, right? It's like the Spybots get vision, the Sheldons get increased range, and you can really just abuse it. I understand maybe you don't want to drop the tempo as much, but I think you'd be able to accomplish a lot more with the metal invested into T2 than you would be able to with the metal invested into T1. Still, we're bullying back Perfy. You've denied this max and that max. Beautiful. Okay. That's a lot of LLTs, sir. I don't think it's bad to spam this many, but I think that like so many of these are kind of unnecessary, right? Like these, if they were forward, like I talked about, these are, you know, they could be forward too. Uh, when you have the forward con here, if you've already got these, you might as well just eat this. Oops. I mean, you don't necessarily need the metal now, but I would probably eat it. Another thing along that vein is, um, I think it's always good to have jammers. I think you might as well have built a jammer up here and then also drop some AA, right? Like you're fighting a core player. If he does a Shuri transition and all you have are these, just imagine like 10 Shuri's running up and stunning your entire army, right? Like 1700 metal worth. You have no AA. Your commander's your only AA. So I would say just like build some nettles or some thistles, whatever they're called. What are the core ones? Core ones are thistles. Sorry, build some thistles in there as well. Energy storage converters. Okay. Red's dying, so how are we going to respond to this? We are going to push up. Good. I like this. This is one of the cons. If you can dive it, it'd be pretty nice. Where are we running? I think you can just dive the... Okay, okay. I would probably kill him, but fair enough. You're going to collapse in here instead. Oh, and he gives you some gunslingers while he rebuilds. Very kind of him. You can come bully this commander. And at the same time, you're going to be pushing mid. Good. All right, so I like this. Uh, Calm is boosting twin guards. What? Twin guards outrange LLTs. Why would you build it here instead of literally like there where it can shoot the LLT? Also, you don't need any more towers here, my dude. You have 17 LLTs and two twin guards. You've got like the majority, you've got 60% of a T2 lap here. Eat those, go T2. I think I think you need it uh, like a sooner T2 transition would just make this game so much easier. Because think about like what fiends would do to this, or like Sheldon's just outrange it, so you can just chip away at it. Okay, that LLT is living the experience dream. Calm is cloaked. All right, you can push forward now. So you're going to up, up, and then go fusion. 
I think if you have Geo, you probably don't even need to go Fusion. I mean, even without it, you're at such insane energy income just off wind. I think this is one of the rare cases where I'd say it's almost better just to make like two E stores and keep spamming wind and then just like use all of that energy because you already have the equivalent of two fusions like yes the predictable energy is nice but i think it's better achieved through a geo you can still drop it if you're floating in metal but i think you might as well just put that 4k metal because you're already winning your lane right like you're winning your lane he's losing his lane i think it makes way more sense to have 4k metal in units that can either end the game or save an ally than it is to drop the fusion that you don't need Right, like you've never been, like you haven't been struggling for E this entire time. All right, so Sneeko's T2 vehicles and Perfy is T2, which is really scary, and you're still stuck on T1. Why are we triple bot lab, sir? My brother in Christ, let's talk about differentiation. Uh, all right, we already talked about it enough. I'm just gonna say different labs. Like you can definitely spam, but there's no reason to in this situation, I don't think. Like, there's LLTs and there's all sorts of other stuff. Why not just drop the T2 lab and go fiends yourself? Like, if you have Spybots or Sheldons, you can easily chip through all of this, and you can kill that comm pretty simply. Oh god, don't self D. That was some value. Oh. Oh god. Oh, this APM stall has been disastrous. It happens though. T2 again, please. So you get another T2. He dropped Weber. So Snake was pushing, but he kind of got pushed back. And at least on this side, Orange is doing well. Check that Geo. What a boss. So Orange is winning there. So I'd say just if you can just stop Snake and hold mid, then Orange can push through and just end the game. And they lost a comm. So you see. You see both commanders here. I would almost argue. If you're going to do anything here, just go like, <laughs> buddy, what are you doing, my brother? Uh, I would just go like pure grunt instead of agitator and just run these down because they're both visible right here. And if you snipe them before they, they realize what's happening, you can just end the game. Oh, and he's got spy bots, spy bots and T2. You got your other T2 there. Okay. You're dropping the fusion and you desperately need energy. So that makes sense. JK, JK, didn't mean it, didn't mean it. But like, even here, we've seen bulls and fiends. How much AA is there on the field? There's a commander. So no one has AA in their base, which is crazy to me. That's something I didn't mention. I always like to build just, even just like a few nettles because it's one of those things where like if you have like three to four nettles in your base and then you see a bombing run coming you can drop another like one or two but a lot of times like the initial nettles you have will either have the the bombing player like move away from it because they'll have scouts and they'll go let me go bomb someone else which is kind of a messed up thing to say but it's nice when someone else gets bombed instead of you or if he commits to killing you, he only kills you, right? He doesn't kill someone else. So it's one of those nice things where like you kind of play that sacrificial role where he's like, okay, let me bomb this. Let me bomb this. You know, let me bomb all of these. These are spaced one, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, but because you have the nettles, you'll kill them all right now. If someone had done a good bomber transition, well, this guy's, this guy's got a, he knows what's up. But like if someone had done a good bomber transition, they could basically erase your entire base unless you can get out K-Bots soon enough, like AA K-Bots. Um, this guy's no AA too, so they could probably kill both of you. So just think about that. But my original point was if you'd gone Shuri right now, you could have killed like everything on the field. All right. Got a lot and we are pushing. Let's go, let's go. Orange is probably going to win, but you still want to apply pressure so that blue can't flex into him. Blue is flexing into him, but you're still applying pressure, so good. Yes, yeah, so he has like a nice little lab mix here, so he can... He can definitely abuse things like res bots are cool with other bots, but res bots are actually amazing with vehicles because the vehicles have the health pool that they can really abuse repair, right? Like Resbot Pounder is the stuff of nightmares. Oh, perfect. Are you going to dive him? He's low. He looks low. 
All right, awesome. So you kill him, and then there's only one comm left, and you know it's here, right? Or you know it's around here somewhere. Oh my god, this guy just got a. Th oh, this is the dream. Get him, fat boy. Get him. One more, one more. Oh no, he killed his own. Last comm here, you spot it. Beautiful. Um, because the game is as tense as it is, you probably don't need anti. And you know, you're gonna build your first converter. Word. I think earlier T2 probably would have been better there. Let's continue. You're gonna flood into his base, kill all his BP. Beautiful. Last comms there, they just surrender anyway. So, before the credits roll, let's just talk some brief summary stuff. Um, first, I liked your opening for the most part. I thought it was a good mix of con and grunt. I just didn't fully appreciate how you used your units. I think that for the path that you took, it would have made more sense for your commander to go like this and then to have another con go like that and up and take those mexes because you left like these three, I think it was these three mexes or something. You left those uncapped for like six minutes. So take those sooner, right? That's so much metal, right? That's nine metal a second. That's just an insane amount of metal that you would have had from there. So I would say do that. And you always want the front con anyway. So that's the first thing there, right? Like good unit mix. Just make sure you're capping all your mixes. Second, um, I think you could have transitioned out of grunts sooner. I think that if you had just gone straight thug, you probably would have hit the critical thug mass where you can just like literally F walk at him. And if his comm is there, it doesn't matter because thugs just bully cons. And if you have res bots behind him, I think you would have been able to probably push through and just kill him. I think it would have been fine. So either do that or if you want, you can definitely just do rocket bots instead. I think the rocket bots probably would have worked. I mean, they, they worked really well. I think you could have just done the transition sooner. Along that line, let's look at your glorious 18. 18, yes. We finished with 18 LLTs and two twin guards on a single screen. All the Raptor players are very proud of you. But these could have been laid out better, I think, right? Like we talked about, these were here. LLT creep forward, right? Like these were here, you can LLT creep forward. Like there was another LLT there, but even if you have one rocket bot shooting it, you can probably do it. And then instead of making like the Great Wall of Canada right here, you just make a line like that because your goal with LLTs is to control the space and have an area where if he brings units and you bring units, his units need to enter the area and you out trade them because the LLTs that you have built kill whatever units he has and then your units fight back as well. So I think that was a big thing for me is like you could control so much more space if you were just like more aggressive with your LLT walk. The other thing that that would have done if you'd done it really early is deny this max because he held that for quite a bit of time, like for a few minutes until you had rocket bots. If you deny that mechs, like think about if you deny that max and took the other mechs in mid, think about how rich you would have been in comparison, right? Like all of mid together is what one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's like 18 metal a second. If you had done that and denied this max and all he held was that, you would have been at 12 metal a second and he would have been at three metal a second. So when you're pushing, like, think about that, right? Be like, okay, yeah, like, do I want to push here? And what do I want to deny on the map? Because I think a huge part of this is like, if you can hold mid like you're holding it here, you're going to win eventually just through sheer unit production because you just make more stuff than he has. So even if he's like building decent counters to what you're making, it doesn't matter because matter, you're just going to take all the metal in the world and just shove it down his throat and win. So do the LLT creep there so that you have much better control. In terms of your eco side, wind farm, A plus, no E storage, F minus, your entire eco is like wind, right? Like, like if, if you don't have E storage and the wind drops, it's just an absolute nightmare for you. So get an early E storage. I'd say this is one of the maps where you might even want two, which is a little crazy to say, but E stores are so cheap right even the core ones are like a little bit more expensive but they're 175 
I think if you just drop that, right, instead of, you know, the full, you, well, you only have 4K because you have a fusion. Like, you had, like, a 1,000 e-storage for most of the game, so when the wind dropped, you just got trolled. Like, have that extra 12K so that if you need to cloak or if you need to spam D-guns or if you need your LLT wall of Canada to fire, you have the energy to do it. Along that line with energy, there's no reason for you not to take the Geo. Yes, T1, you know, like, in terms of efficiency, a T1 Geo is not as efficient as wind at 25. I don't remember what it is. I think it's wind is like 21 or something for the efficiency. I'd have to look at a spreadsheet. But what it does give you is constant energy production so that you never stall out. There are a few times where like the wind dropped and you're kind of your whole economy like ground to a halt. And if you take the Geo, it's much less likely to happen, right? You can just support more. And taking the Geo for something like that gives you that e-boost to do a transition into something like air, which is really energy intensive. Along that line, you won spamming grunts, which is awesome. Goopy is watching in the shadows, cheering you on very excitedly. But I would argue that you could have done like a vehicle transition along with this, like you could go bot vehicle or like bot air. And I think it would have been way more effective. Like most of what you were fighting in here were a bunch of bots. Just imagine if like you had rocket bots and pounders with a couple of Wolverines or something, or even just straight brute, right? Like I think you would have been able to just pour down this and you were floating metal in the second half quite a bit, trying to spam bots to like burn through all your metals really hard. Um, I mean, those are building that, but here, let's see. He's all boosting. I don't know if I can actually get you a full count. I mean, you've got four bot labs and eight nanos and you're only spending 49 metal a second, right? And so you're using that, to, you're building other stuff, but like if you're spamming brutes, you can just get rid of that metal so much quicker. And so I think that'd be, that would have been a better thing to do to mix in either do a bombing run or use Shuri's and just completely deny his army. That's one of the things that's like, I think great with air transitions. If you watch like Kuchi or Neza, um, MBT is really good at it too, where they don't even commit to the lab. They literally like drop, they, they drop an air lab. They build like 10 shuries and then they just eat the air lab immediately. And then it's like, okay, if you build anti-air, I don't even care. But those 10 shuries in a fight that normally would be like a 50-50 chance to win, the 10 shuries come in and they like, they just completely stomp the fight. So never underestimate that. I think you could have dropped that and then done it. Uh, along that line, if you had the con coming and upping all of these, you would have had a con on the front and you always want a front con in my opinion in these, maybe not quite as much, but there's tons of situations where you still want it. Like think if you were losing your lane and it was a con, you had a front con eventually, but he needed to be there sooner. Like if you start to lose your lane, they don't have LOS in here, right? Imagine if like your con snuck in like this and you dropped a jammer like here right like you don't have a sneaky pete so you have to abuse terrain you can totally build a jammer like here and then your calm can cloak walk in here and then once he has the e pop up the other side and then like suicide into an army or calm trade or something but you need you know you didn't have to but you need that capability right there's no reason not to have an early front con additionally um like you couldn't put like once he had LLTs, it was hard for you to push until your rocket bots got there. The great thing is if you have the front con, you can just be like, oh, twin guard. Right. And then the twin guard can start poking away at that. Or like if he goes rocket bot or if he goes lasher, whistler, whatever, then like you have the option to drop dragons maws or you have the option to drop HLTs. So uh, the front one is there as well. I think your earlier T2 was relatively uh, well-timed you did that to help him and then i think you upped that you had cons going on there so good job there um there are a few things that i pointed out that were smaller like i think maybe you want to flex into the other side but aside from that uh good job overall uh they just surrendered so you won let's see who gets the awards who is the greatest player in the game and is it you no it is snake on the other team well done mr snake well done, Mr. Pessimistic Snake. Oh, and everything else is gone. Okay. You took a lot of damage, but you did a lot of damage. All right. That is it for me. Hope it was helpful. Hit me with questions in the Discord thread.